Fora TV. The world is thinking. If the United States were to actually bomb Iran, uh, the idea would, would go something like this. The, the neoconservatives who are advocating this say, okay, the U.S. has overwhelming military support, uh, uh, superiority. Roughly half the American warships in the U.S. Navy are now in and around the, the waters off the shores of Iran. U.S. would send in missiles and planes, knock out all their air defenses, uh, knock out the nuclear facilities, um, knock out Revolutionary Guards. They're not going to just hit the, 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 the nukes. They're going to go after a wide range, maybe three to ten days worth of bombing to really try to weaken the regime with the claim that they're setting back their plans to build weapons. And the, as a result of that, the regime will be, so, the theory goes, the regime will be so weakened that the people of Iran will rise up in an orange revolution and take power from the evil mullahs. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> you know, again, in, in Target Iraq, we went into a lot of detail about how, yes, people hated Saddam Hussein, and they would hate a U.S.-sponsored dictator even more. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And, it, and, and Iran is even more, I mean, the Iranian people, you know, I've been to Iran now three times, and I was in Iraq a couple times. You know, Iraq, you could not just go out onto the street and interview people at random and get honest opinions. The, the repression by Saddam Hussein was palpable. And you could see, uh, every, every country I've ever gone to as a reporter, I, and, and to the dismay of my wife, countries where we vacationed, I go out on the street and I, I talk to people at random just to chat with them and get a sense of the, of the politics, what they think of their government, etc. And in Iraq, it was very clear that unless you were talking in private and they trusted you and they knew it wasn't going to be repeated, there was kind of like a line after people wouldn't cross because it was a very repressive society under Saddam Hussein. In Iran, it's very interesting. You, it's, you don't get that same sense. I go out on the street, and uh, one time I was going there, my official visa was for a, um, to do reporting about the film industry in Iran. And then, but I had told them also I was going to be doing some political reports. But to be on the safe side, when we stopped, on, we went out to a working class neighborhood in Iran, and I started asking about what's your favorite uh, films, uh, you know, do you like Iranian films, do you like foreign films? And there's one woman, so she was a young woman wearing a chador, which meant she was you know, a, a, a religious believer. Um, and she said, what are you asking me about movies? Why don't you ask me about inflation? Do you know how bad inflation here? And she just went off on a rant. You know, she just, went, she just ripped Ahmadinejad a new one. Uh, although I don't think they use that phrase over there. Anyway, um, she was really mad about inflation. And people are mad about unemployment. And they, and they will speak their minds to a foreign reporter, which is even more, you know, that's, it just gives you an idea of, of the, the sense that the people have. Now, again, Iran is not free. Um, women are certainly repressed. Uh, workers' demonstrations or demonstrations of any kind are severely repressed. Um, and the elections are manipulated in all kinds of ways. So, uh, but it's, it's not the same kind of totalitarian uh, atmosphere uh, that you see in uh, you saw under Saddam Hussein's Iraq or Pinochet's Chile, etc. Um, so the Iranian people are perfectly capable of handling the getting rid of their own government. The uh, U.S. attack would rally everybody against the United States. It would have the exact opposite impact of what these neocons claim, and it would set back in every single one of the leaders of the Iranian opposition that I met with, whether it was Shirin Abadi, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, or Ibrahim Yazdi, a very well known, he's a former government minister, he's a very well known opposition leader. Uh, you just go down to Akbar Ganji, who is now uh, living here in the United States. Every single one of them says bombing Iran would be a disaster. It would have the, it would rally support for the government. Uh, but of course, and, and it's very interesting when Bush and Cheney and all those people talk about, you know, their, the fight for democracy in Iran, where are the Iranians? that they're pointing to as an example. In the case of Iraq, they had a few toadies. They had their uh, Ahmed Chalabis and you know, people like that that were on the CIA payroll now. We know that it was kind of obvious from what they were saying, but now we know it's official. Um, and you know, they, oh, freedom fighters, blah, 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 okay. In the case of Iran, they have not produced a single 
Iranian who favors a bombing of Iran. So far, now maybe eventually they'll be able to find some toadies, but they can't because it is so overwhelmingly unpopular, both inside Iran and even, in the, even among conservatives in the exile community here in the United States. So if the US did bomb Iran, you would see pot potential things that would happen. The, uh, Iran could sabotage the Strait of Hormuz, the very narrow strait that separates Iran and Iraq, and uh, from which 25% of the world's oil supply flows. Oil prices would spike even higher than they are today. Um, the allies of Iran in Iraq could turn their fire seriously on the United States, causing far more deaths of Americans and causing a, a complete collapse of the U.S. effort in Iraq. <clears throat> Hamas in Palestine and Hezbollah in uh, uh, sorry, Lebanon could step up their activities. A new war could well break out with Israel in that area, a, a two-front war this time. Um, and most frighteningly uh, of all, uh, it, Iran could go back to sponsoring terrorist attacks in Europe or in the United States, something that they have not been doing now. And just as in Saddam Hussein's situation, he had no links with al-Qaeda right before the war. We now know that. But al-Qaeda is there now and, and is a problem in Iraq. The same kind of thing could well either because people are on their own doing this to support Iran or because Iran would sponsor it. Uh, so the consequences are quite uh, hor horrific. You won't see it immediately because the Bush will declare victory. Oh, we've set back this, we've done this. We, uh, look, they, ca they can't even get their planes off the ground, blah, blah, blah. And you know, we see the guided missiles going in and CNN will be there going right on and New York Times will be going right on. You know. But in the days and the months afterwards, we'll see the co actual consequences of those actions, which will be even far worse than the US invasion of, of Iraq.